All right, I am live here. I am going to talk about five books that I have read this year that I'm recommending, the best five that I have read. But before I do, my friends, let me know in the comments if you have read a good book this year, and I will check that out. Let's get right on into this thing. I'm recommending first and foremost the horror novel Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Joe Hill, for those of you that don't know, is the son of Stephen King, and this is a horror novel that has a fantasy kind of twist to it. Vic McQueen is our main character here, and Vic McQueen is a little girl who has the special ability to travel to other places, other dimensions, kind of, in her mind and in reality. And our antagonist, our evil bad guy in this one, is, what was his name? He, he Oh, shoot. Brain fart here, my friends. Let me look here. Shoot. I always have a brain fart. Every time I think I've got something right, I have a brain fart. Charles Manx is the bad guy in this one. And he also has the ability to travel to these other worlds. And he's actually created a world called Christmas Land, where he takes little children to live forever with him. And Christmas Land is basically like hell. And Charles Manx goes after Vic McQueen. So it's a battle between Vic McQueen and Charles Manx. And it's a really interesting novel because of how unique it is. This is a lengthy book. You can see that it's like a really massive novel, even though this is the large print edition. Uh, this is a lengthy book, but I was totally engrossed in this thing the whole time. It could have even been longer. It was so good. Joe Hill does a fantastic job with the characters in this and the vivid, unique, unusual landscape. It's such a different book. It was unlike anything that I have ever read before. And if you're in for a scare, if you're in for a good horror novel, I highly recommend it. Let's move on to the second book that I'm going to be recommending. Ashley and Sprite. I recently read Strange Weather by Joe Hill, and it was fantastic. Uh, leave me uh, a comment, guys, and I will reply to you. Strange Weather is a book of short stories, I think. I might own it, but I haven't read it yet. I'm really looking forward to that because I've actually read Joe Hill's Horns, and I've read his The Fireman, so I want to read all of his books. Uh, another person asks, have you read any Poe or Lovecraft? And I hate to say it, my friends, that I have not read Poe. In school, I remember the Telltale Heart we read in school one day. I thought that was pretty good, uh, but I actually own some Poe. I have one or two collections of his work, and I have to get to that. Uh, I mean, who hasn't read Poe, right? I haven't read Poe. Uh, and I have not read Lovecraft, but I intend to in the near future. Moving on with This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger, who's going to be coming on my program here for an interview in the near future. Uh, this Tender Land is a saga. It's a heartfelt drama about some kids that have a hard life in an institution that they live in for children. And this is no spoiler, my friends. The kids ex escape as soon as the novel opens up. And they go on an adventure. And this tender land is their adventure. And there's love in this book. And there's betrayal in this book. And there's death in this book. And it was a really vivid experience. This tender land was such a fantastic novel that I highly, highly recommend it. It's the best novel that I have read this year and one of the best books that I have ever read in my entire life. I just finished a couple days ago, Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger, and it's another book that is so filled with drama. It's just a tear-jerking kind of thing, and William Kent Kruger does a fantastic job getting an emotional response out of the author, so make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell because I will be interviewing William Kent Kruger on August 13th right here on my channel, and I'll update you guys about that here in the near future. Uh, let me move on here to my third recommendation. If you're wondering why I'm going through this again, my friends, I had a technical problem early, earlier, but no problem. Uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner 
of Azkaban. I'm 35 years old, making my way through the Harry Potter books for the first time, and I'm absolutely just awestruck by these books. I didn't know if I would like it. I thought, I mean, I was really skeptical about these Harry Potter books. And in The Prisoner of Azkaban, I was totally engrossed. It was the best book of the series so far. Can't wait to finish them all. But in this one, there is an element of time travel that J.K. Rowling introduces into this book. And I thought it worked really well. I'm absolutely committed to the characters in this book and seeing how all of their stories uh, play out. I really love this. No wonder this series of books blew up to be the biggest thing of all time, basically. I really love Harry and I love the fact that he's an imperfect hero and I love Hermione. I was actually saying her name, Hermoyne, Hermoyne, until somebody corrected me on that. Uh, but Ron and all of the professors, it's such a brilliant piece of literature that I'm really looking forward to going on with book four. And the first three are kind of shorter books in the Harry Potter series, but book four is a much larger installment. And I'm looking forward to finishing this because I've only ever finished one series in my entire life. I've read the Dark Tower series, haven't finished any other ones. Uh, so I'm almost halfway through the, the uh, Harry Potter books now. And I'm really looking forward to finishing them all and reviewing them all here, right here on my channel. It's just fantastic. The next one I'm going to recommend here, my friends, is another book that really competes for the best book I've read so far this year, and that is Clan of the Cave Bear. Don't forget to leave me a comment here, guys. If you've read a good book, I always check those out. I've really been led into some good reads. Uh, as far as my viewers leaving comments about good books, I always, I've always i checked every single one of them out that you guys have recommended. I go right over to Goodreads and uh, check those out. So don't forget to drop me a comment. Clan of the Cave Bear, The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean Aou. I really like her last name. Aou. Uh, this is a book. It's, a, it's kind of like a fantasy book, but it's probably more appropriately described as a prehistoric novel. And it's about a little girl named Ayla. And Ayla is a Cro-Magnon girl. And she lives about 30,000 years ago or so, before modern humans. And she's a Cro-Magnon living with her family. And this is no spoiler, my friends. As this novel opens up, there is an earthquake. And Ayla is separated from her Cro-Magnon tribe. And she's out on her own. She's just a little child. She nearly dies. And she's taken in by a group of Neanderthal people. And she goes to their cave with them. And she lives there with them. And she's different from them because Ayla is more like a modern human than the Neanderthals are. So she's smarter. And they see her as being more beautiful than they are. And she has some good relationships with Kreb, the medicine man that absolutely loves her, but she's also an outcast and many of them don't like her. So this is a drama about her life and about the people that she lives with, the Neanderthal people there. It's a coming of age. Ayla grows into being a young woman in this novel and it's just such a fantastic book. It's epic in scope and the relationships like I think this is a debut novel, but it's got to be one of the best books that I have ever read. And it's a six book series is this one. So I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of these things. I just cannot say enough. I could probably elaborate for hours about why I loved this book. The Clan of the Cave Bear is such a fantastic piece of literature. It's such a great believable drama. And it's a lot of fun to think about what prehistoric times might have been like. And I know the author did a lot of investigation into history and prehistory uh, when she wrote this. So it's just a home run. I strongly recommend that you go along with Ayla and the other prehistoric peoples in this novel and experience the journey. I think that you're really going to love it if you give it a try. All right, here's the last one 
uh, that I'm mentioning mentioning here as far as my five best books that I've read this year. And it's not actually this one. This is the most recent installment in the series that I picked up. This one's book three of the Dresden Files, Grave Peril. But I'm actually recommending book one. I don't have a paperback copy of it. I, I listened to the audio book. It's called Stormfront by Jim Butcher. And it's about a man named Harry Dresden who happens to be a wizard. He's Chicago's only professional wizard, and he's a private detective. It turns out in this book, it takes place in Chicago. And in Chicago, occasionally, there are crimes that are committed, horrendous crimes that involve magic. So police lieutenant Karen Murphy of the Chicago Police Department, she calls Harry Dresden in every once in a while to help her uh, with the magical crimes and there's a murder that happens in Stormfront. Dresden gets pulled in. And I really love the inventiveness of this book. I got, a, I got a comment here. Have you read any nonfiction lately? And I have. I'm reading some uh, nonfiction. Check my nonfiction channel out. Nonfiction Funk. Look it up in the search uh, bar there. I will be updating that channel soon here, my friends. I've had some technical issues that I'm working through. It's why I haven't updated here as frequently as I should be. And I will be updating. Uh, I will be putting content out. I'm going to try to every day here in the near future. Uh, but yeah, I have read some nonfiction lately. And I'm actually going to be reading a book soon on the First World War. And I'll come back to that nonfiction theme here in just a minute. The Dresden Files. I highly recommend it. Harry Dresden is an imperfect wizard, and I really love him as a hero. It's kind of like, there's kind of like some things that are in common with the Harry Potter series. Not only are, are Harry and Harry both wizards, but they're both imperfect wizards, and it's just fantastic. The Dresden Files is so inventive and unlike anything that I have ever read before. And from what I understand, my friends, uh, this book starts to change the series a bit. You see, in Stormfront, it's a detective kind of whodunit thing. Harry the Wizard's seeking out a, a, a magical uh, assassin, basically. And it's a whodunit detective thing, but from what I understand, it starts to go more epic fantasy style in this book. And I'm really looking forward to reading every one of these, The Dresden Files. I'll tell you what, and this is rare for me. Uh, I never read a series, books back to back. And I actually read book one and book two in The Dresden Files back to back. I was so hooked by book one that I actually had to have more. So I just can't... Uh, recommend any more strongly the Dresden Files series by Jim Butcher. Ashley and Sprite. I know I have already suggested Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman, but I just want to make sure you won't forget about it. Best book I've read this year, and hello there, Juan Martinez. Uh, I will check that out. I will go to Goodreads and check that out. You know, I've gotten so many good book recommendations from my viewers, dropping them in the comments. I look up every single one of them. And if you follow me on Goodreads, you'll see that I mark a lot of those in my want to read category. Look me up on Goodreads, Reading Funk. I'm on Goodreads. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. So if you're curious, you can add me on those platforms. Really enjoy your reviews and content. Keep it up. Well, thank you, sir. You know, I really love reading novels, and I have read some nonfiction. Let me come back to that. Let me pull my Goodreads up, actually, here. Give me just a second here. I'll pull my Goodreads up. I'll actually just read you every book I've read this year. I've got it up here. I'm 30 books into my 40-book goal as far as Goodreads goes. And I'm going to break my record. Last year, I read 40 and that included two graphic novels, but I'm like basically shooting for 50 this year. Uh, here we go. I, wrote, I read Misquoting Jesus, The Story Behind Who Changed the Bible and Why by Bart Ehrman. That was the first book I read this year. Uh, another one, the second one, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is a book about a serial killer, the Golden State Killer. Third book I read this year, A History of the Bible, The Story of the World's Most Influential Book 
by John Barton. The fourth book I read this year, More Than Allegory, on religious truth, something, 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 something. Uh, the fifth book, so this is five in a row that I read starting this year off that were nonfiction. Check out my nonfiction channel, Nonfiction Funk. Uh, the fifth one was Peter, Paul, and Mary Magdalene, the, the followers of Jesus in history and legend. Sixth book, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. That was a fantastic book. I really loved that one. I'm basically hooked on the Arthurian sagas now. Uh, the seventh one, You Are the Universe, another nonfiction book uh, by B Deepak Chopra in Menes, Menes Kafatos. You know, I like reading a lot of different philosophies from materialism to idealism. Uh, I don't care what it is. I just like reading it and getting different perspectives. Juan Martinez, I'm looking forward to starting Game of Thrones this year. Recently got a really good deal for the seven books in hardcover. Stoked to get into that world. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to continue my Goodreads thing here in just a second. A Game of Thrones, the Song of Ice and Fire series, fantastic. I'm going to be going into book two later this year. It's, it's really neat. I, I want to get like a matching set of those. And I want to get a matching set of the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. And I want to get a matching set of the Dresden Files books by Jim Butcher. I just love those matching sets. I just like the way they look rather than having like a 15 book series, all a bunch of different uh, non-uniform covers. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally recommend a Game of Thrones. Juan, Juan Martinez, check out the review I did on that. I'm actually going to be redoing that review uh, when I finish A Clash of Kings so that I can be fresh with George R. R. Martin's writing. Uh, I find it's hard for me to review a book if I read it a couple years ago and I can't really recall it. Uh, so I will be reviewing all of the Song of Ice and Fire books right here on my channel. Uh, starting later this year, I'm going to redo the first one and review the second one. Uh, wow. You got the matching set for $28. Damn. That's a good deal. You got lucky because some of those can go for a lot more than that. Um, okay. So the next one I read this year was Nosferatu by Joe Hill, which was, uh, a book that I just recommended as far as the best five that I've read this year. Absolutely fantastic book. Any horror novel recommend recommendations by Rathan? Sorry if I get your guys' names wrong, but yeah, Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Oh, another one for you there as far as a horror novel. The next book I read after that this year was Lisey's Story by Stephen King, which is a horrific romance novel. A lot of people don't realize that uh, Stephen King wrote a romance novel, and it's really interesting, and I'll tell you what. I gave up on it after 100 pages. I was in a group read, and they kept telling me, just keep pushing, just keep pushing. So I kept pushing, and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, there's two horror recommendations for you. The next book I read was This Tender Land, which I just recommended. The next one was Seize the Night by Dean Koontz. Here's another horror recommendation for you. Um, Rathan, another horror recommendation, Seize the Night by Dean Koontz. I actually recommend reading the first book in this trilogy that's not finished yet, Seize the Night being book two. Um, it's called Fear Nothing by Dean Koontz. Really good novel. The next one I read was The Eyes of Darkness by Dean Koontz, a horror novel that I did not care for. I only read it because it was in like the media, because people were saying it predicted the coronavirus, which I did a whole video on, my friends. Uh, if you scroll back through my recent, excuse me, my recent videos, you'll see where I basically debunk that. Didn't like The Eyes of Darkness, though. The next one, The Clan of the Cave Bear by Gene Aul, which I just recommended. The next one I read was another nonfiction, The Triumph of Christianity by Bart Ehrman, How a Forbidden Religion Swept the World, which was a really interesting history book about the origins of Christianity. The next one I read was a nonfiction book that was so fascinating. It's called Einstein's Monsters, The Life and Times of Black Holes. I actually watched a black hole documentary on Netflix. Um, Jan Eleven uh, is an astrophysicist who led that documentary, and I was so fascinated by it. I thought, I've got to get a book because reading books are my favorite medium for learning. 
and Einstein's Monsters, The Life and Times of Black Holes by the astronomer Chris M. Pei is an absolutely fascinating look at, at like the most extreme things in our entire universe. I just can't get enough content about black holes. It's such a fascinating topic. Okay, Kostrick, after, wa after watching your reviews, I started the Moonlight Bay series. Hoping the third book comes out at some point. Really enjoyed the first two. You know, I absolutely agree with you. And Fear Nothing, the first installment in the Moonlight Bay trilogy, is one of three books in my lifetime that I've read more than once. I did a reread on Fear Nothing in preparation for reading Seize the Night. I read Fear Nothing last year and Seize the Night this year. Really good books, and I highly recommend them. And I, I'm waiting for the third installment myself. I really hope we get that sometime soon. And I really think that there just might be uh, a crossing of paths between Odd Thomas and Christopher Snow in that one. Next one I read was a classic called The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Highly recommend it. It's like the predecessor for science fiction novels. Brilliant book. Sometimes you might think, a oh, classic. Classics are sometimes boring. They don't read like a modern novel. The Time Machine, my friends, is, an, is a fascinating and engrossing read that I, I couldn't possibly recommend anymore. Excuse me. Oh, I want to show you guys these things. I'm into these now. I'm going to be ordering the Harry Dresden one soon. This is Kirk Hammett of Metallica. And this is Bob Gray of, uh, of It. It's It. It's Bob Gray. It's Pennywise. I know there are quite a few different ones of the Pennywise. <laughs> he's, got, he's got like uh, a nice haircut if you look at the back of him. I like these Funko Pop toys. They're pretty neat. Uh, I actually sent the Stephen King one to someone recently as a gift, and I need to get that one myself. They're only like $6 online, so I think that's a pretty good deal. Any other collaboration coming soon? Juan Martinez. There are going to be a lot of collaborations coming soon. I've had some technical problems with my computer, um, but now that that's like getting behind me, I'm going to have Edward Lorne back on. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to do, I mentioned that I've reread a, a few books in my life. Fear Nothing by Dean Koontz, I read it twice. I read The Gunslinger by Stephen King three times. I read The Drawing of the Three, the second book, in the Dark Tower series three times. And this year I'm going to be reading soon, probably within like another month, the third installment, The Wastelands, for a reread of that. And I'm going to have Edward Lorne back on to do a spoiler-filled Dark Tower review uh, after I get another uh, book in me on the Dark Tower series to refresh my mind with the tower. And I'm also reaching out to some other YouTubers, some of them that have a smaller channel than I do, some of them that have a larger channel that I do, and I'm reaching out to authors and everything like that. I'm really going to try to bring my channel up as far as the quality of the content and the nuance of the content. So I'm always looking for recommendations. I'm always looking for a constructive criticism uh, concerning what I can do here to get better. If you think I do something that's not very good and I could change my technique, please let me know about it. If there's something that you do like and you think I'm on point with, please let me know about it. Yeah, I, uh, Juan Martinez, I enjoyed that conversation with Edler, Edward Lorne as well, and he is going to be coming back on here in the near future. So keep your eye out for that. Next book I read this year was Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, another nonfiction. Um, it's a fantastic book. It's one part Holocaust survivor memoir, death camp survivor memoir. Uh, Viktor Frankl was a psychiatrist and a neurologist that went to Auschwitz and a couple other death camps. He survived it, and Man's Search for Meaning is about that. And it's about afterwards. He writes a philosophy called logotherapy about finding meaning for your life, even in the worst of scenarios. And I just absolutely loved it. it it's one of the best philosophical kinds of books uh, that I've ever read. All right. <clears throat> Death by Black Hole. You know, I just can't get enough about black holes. Death by Black Hole by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Read it earlier this year, and I recommend it. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which I just recommended. I gave it a five-star rating on Goodreads. 
The next one I read was called YouTube Secrets, the ultimate guide to something or the other. And I thought it was good. Can't see the whole title there by Sean Cannell and Benji Travis. Just about trying to be good on YouTube and create good content. I thought it was a pretty good book. Uh, do I recommend it? <sighs> maybe. Maybe. If you got a few bucks to spare, maybe. But you could get what I learned in that book just by watching videos for free on YouTube. The next one I read was Black House by Stephen King and Peter Straub. And I did not like it. I, it was the fourth time that I tried to go through that book. And I finally forced my way through it. Will I post my list after I'm done? Uh, could you? Are, are you talking about uh, what the books that I'm talking about now? Because you can actually check that out. Um, if you just join me on Goodreads, you can see what I'm reading, what I've read in the past, what I want to read uh, in the future. Uh, just look up Reading Funk on Goodreads. You'll find me there. Raythan, what's the worst nonfiction book that you've ever read? Oh, that's a good one. I'm not, oh, ho, ho. I had a book come to mind just now. I read this book, and forgive me if you liked this one, if you've ever read it. There's this book called about the Skinwalker Ranch. And the Skinwalker Ranch was a ranch in Utah, or is a ranch in Utah, where a family that was living there said that they were experiencing demons from other worlds and UFOs and, and ghosts and aliens and evil animals on their farm out there in Utah. And I thought it was absolutely uh, just ridiculous and absurd. And I didn't finish it uh, because I just didn't care for it. But that's the one that comes to mind uh, as far as that goes. I did not like the Skinwalker Ranch. I forget exactly what the title is. It's it's a scientific investigation into the Skinwalker Ranch or something like that. Excuse me. I thought it was horrible. 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos by Jordan B. Peterson. This is a nonfiction book. It's a self-help book. It's a fairly sophisticated psychology book, uh, but it's not an ap academic book uh, by Jordan Peterson. I like reading against my worldview when it comes to nonfiction. Uh, I don't just like reading things that I think are right. I like to challenge myself. And I did so with 12 Rules for Life, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I thought it was just a phenomenal read. And I highly recommend 12 Rules for Life. Even if you disagree with Jordan Peterson on some things, uh, be it politics or religion or whatever, I think his book is worth reading. And I'm going to read his uh, Maps of Meaning soon. Undeniable by Bill Nye. Evolution and the Science of Creation. You know, I really like Bill Nye. He actually taught a lot of my uh, middle school science classes when the teacher was being lazy. She just she or, or he uh, or my teachers would just throw on an episode of Bill Nye, right? Now, I really like Bill Nye, and I listened to his audiobook of Undeniable, a book that he wrote about evolution. Uh, so there you go, another nonfiction. The next one that I read was Stormfront by Jim Butcher uh, that I just recommended. Wolf Star, finished reading Brett Easton Ellis's Less Than Zero, and I just started Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. You know, I think I might have read a book by Upton Sinclair. I'm almost sure that I have, but I'm having a brain fart. Like, I recognize the author's name. Oh, no, Upton Sinclair. Is that the person that wrote Tobacco Road? Or no, maybe that's not right. I, I'm not sure. I've heard of the name, though. Next one I read was Four Past Midnight by Stephen King, which was four novellas that I absolutely enjoyed. Uh, the Library Policeman. What else was in that one? Hold on a minute here. Let me select onto it and see what was in that. It was four novellas that were just fantastic. It was The Library Policeman, The Sun Dog. That's why it's called Four Past Midnight, because there's four novellas in it. And of course, I can't remember what they were, but they were all good. The next one I read was Full Moon by Jim Butcher. Uh, okay, so I lied there, my friends. I said that I went from Stormfront book one of the Dresden Files, right into book two, but I actually read Four Past Midnight by Stephen King in between those. So it went Stormfront, Four Past Midnight, and then Full Moon. <clears throat> and I highly recommend uh, those Jim Butcher books. The Langoliers and Secret Window, that is absolutely correct. Um, and they were all good. I loved them all. Uh, Behave by 
Uh, Robert Sapolsky is a great read. I, I really am looking forward to reading that. I actually watched him lecture for a couple hours on the book, uh, which kind of like was a spoiler for me. I was like, okay, I watched the lecture. Should I read the book now? But I've heard so many good things about that book that I intend to uh, read it soon. Well, uh, Cade Anderson. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Just finished Four Past Midnight a few days ago. It's good, though I still prefer different seasons as a novella collection. You know, I actually have... One moment. Haven't read it yet, but do have it. Uh, Stephen King, different seasons. And it's got, uh, it's short stories, I think. Oh no, it's four, it's, it's four novellas again. And so is If It Bleeds, which is his most recent one, four novellas again. I haven't read this one. It, it contains Hope Springs Eternal, or Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, Apt Pupil, The Body, and The Breathing Method. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one as well. I've read like, 40-some Stephen King books, and I'm on my quest to read them all. All right, let's keep going here. Almost done. A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. I was just rocked by that classic novel. Uh, Arthur Conan Doyle was an absolute genius, and I did not realize it until I read the first Sherlock Holmes novel, A Study in Scarlet, and I was just like, okay, now I see why Sherlock Holmes blew up. Fantastic book. Five-star rating, and I highly recommend it. The next one I read was called Breaking the, Breaking the Spell, Religion as a Natural Phenomenon by Daniel Dennett. I thought that was pretty good. And the next one I read was Inferno by Dan Brown uh, that I recently read and reviewed here. I thought that was a pretty good book as well. It was a very philosophical novel. And I recommend any of uh, the Dan Brown novels. Check this out. I got this, I think, at a library sale. It's The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. <clears throat> and it, you know, in The Da Vinci Code, there's a lot of artwork that's talked about. And this is the illustrated edition. As you go through, through this thing, a lot of the uh, paintings and pieces of, of the sculptures and stuff that are talked about in the Da Vinci Code are displayed right here on the pages. And I'm going to be reading The Lost Symbol um, soon. And I'd show you my copy of that, but it would upset the camera because it's holding it up. But uh, they have like these illustrated editions of all of these uh, Robert Langdon, Dan Brown novels. So I want to get them all because it's they're really beautiful books, uh, the illustrated editions. And finally, my friends, the last book that I read this year was Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger, who will be coming on my program here August 13th for an interview. I really want to make you guys hip to this author. I know that he has a mystery series, a kind of whodunit series, and I think the first installment is called Iron Lake. And I'm really looking forward to trying those. But uh, I, I recommend it in this, uh, in this video, This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. Fantastic book. If you read uh, Where the Crawdads Sing and you liked it, you will love This Tender Land. So I highly recommend William Kent Kruger as well. So there are... All the books I've read this year so far, I'm currently reading a history book and The Alienist by Caleb Carr, which I'm absolutely loving. The Alienist, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything here for you. It takes place in the very late 1890s in New York City, Manhattan, basically. And it's about the first psychiatrist. Uh, some kids are showing up dead in the city. And a psychiatrist named Laszlo tries to put together the first psychological criminal profile to try to catch this killer. And it's a really interesting book so far. I'm going to go in and read it here in a little while. I'm almost 200 pages in. And I know that uh, they did a, a television series on it. I think that's still ongoing. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to finishing that. Uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, yeah. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of that one. Robin Shama, 5 a.m. Club, is also a good nonfiction. I'll have to look that up. Tobacco Road was, was an Erskine uh, Caldwell. 
That is true. Uh, and I read that one. It's I'm one of like few people that have ever heard of it, to the best of my knowledge. I've mentioned that novel a few times. No one ever knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the Skinwalker Ranch, um, you know, I wish I would have finished that book and reviewed it because I don't like to start one and not finish it, though I'm no stranger to doing so if I'm not enjoying it. But, you know, I really love reading novels and I'm glad you all have joined me here for this. Uh, maybe I could do one more book recommendation here. Let me think one more. I got one and I read it earlier this year. Why didn't it show up on my list? I better correct my Goodreads. Are you into science fiction, my friends, at all? Because uh, I found an astronomer, a retired astronomer, and astronomers are physicists. Uh, Alastair Reynolds, he's over there in England. He's a British guy, and he writes uh, the science fiction novels that are fantastic. This one's called Revelation Space. And this is kind of like the science fiction version of an epic fantasy series. This one's all about uh, other planets. It's the space opera is about deep space and vast periods of time. And I read Revelation Space earlier this year. I'm going to have to correct my Goodreads. I this one should definitely have been in there. So I recommend Alastair Reynolds. Actually, let me just pull a bunch of the books off uh, off my shelf here. And they have kind of like uniform covers on them. These are all part of the Revelation Space series. It started as a trilogy and uh, Chasm City. Chasm City. I read this when I was about 15 years old. I got it at the Walden Books in the mall uh, in, the, in the city that I lived in. And it's part of the Revelation Space series. And I was just like blown away by this. It was the most intellectual, complex thing that I have ever read, had ever read at that point. And I'm looking forward to doing a reread on it. You know, I'm getting old enough now that I actually am rereading some books. Um, but yeah, as a final recommendation here as part of this, I highly recommend the retired astronomer, Alastair Reynolds. Pick up uh, either Revelation Space, or pick up one of his standalone books. He's a really imaginative, intellectual writer that writes these books that take place in deep space and time, and sometimes over long periods. Oh my goodness, he wrote this one called Century Rain that I read. It's one part futuristic space opera novel, and it's one part 1950s nor detective mystery who done it style book you see there's the future the futuristic uh, part and the classic detective part and a wormhole opens between the two worlds connecting them and it, it, it all plays out there's a mystery involved it's just like very deeply imaginative and i like reynolds because um He's an astronomer, and he he knows the physics when he writes about. Uh, and, and in his books, uh, they never exceed uh, faster than light spa uh, space travel. So he tries to make it like as realistic as he can, and they're just good. I recommend Alastair Reynolds, and I want to try the Peter F. Hamilton science fiction series, the Pandora series. I said I'm going to get into some more fantasy and science fiction here. Uh, on my channel in the near future, and I'm totally committed to that. Uh, but I want to try Peter F. Hamilton as well. Uh, Gola, I have been pretty good. Hope you are well. Uh, yeah, the second season just started of The Alienist. What's your favorite genre? Are there any genres you do not like reading? Well, I'm not really into like the Harlequin romance style books. I have read one or two of those. I'm not huge into Westerns, but I think I'm going to read Lonesome Dove soon by Larry McMurty because I've heard that it's a fantastic thousand plus page novel. Like every review that I've ever heard about that book is good. My favorite genre. <clears throat> well, I really like Stephen King, though he's not a genre. 
I'm, I'm not sure if I have a favorite genre. I really like jumping around and just seeing what the different genres have to offer. I like horror. I like mysteries. Let me grab another book here. The Help. I like really dramatic, heartfelt kinds of tear-jerking books. And from what I understand, The Help is like that. Uh, that's why I like William Kent Kruger. I just like to get an emotional response out of a book. I like to feel for the characters in the novel. And if, if an author can get an emotional response out of me, they've really done a great job as far as I'm concerned. And I also like these uh, Stieg Larsson books. I read the first one maybe last year or two years ago at most, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, so I want to finish those. I really like Lizbeth Salander in these. I'm a big fan of hers, and I want to see how her story ends up playing out. Uh, so yeah, I'm into those as well. All right, guys. I have been on here way longer than I thought I would. I think I'm going to start doing a live stream a little bit more often. Let me know in the comments if you can think of material that I could do, anything I could cover as far as a live stream. Of course, I want to get some authors in to interview. I'm thinking about doing an episode on self-published authors and self-published books because uh, I'm like not real familiar with that. I always thought self-published aren't worth reading. If they were worth reading, they'd be bestsellers. But I think uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. So I've got Edward Lorne. I want to bring him on because I know that he writes books and he has sold some books. And I've got another guy that I want to bring on, Victor Wolf, who, who uh, sent me a couple of his self-published books that I'm going to read. So I'm interested in this whole self-published thing. I want to give a couple of these books a try and read and review them here and interview the authors and everything like that. What's your favorite Dark Tower installment? Juan Martinez. I think the second book. I've read it three times. I like the drawing of the three because of the explosion and imagination that happens between book one and two. Uh, but I'm working my way back through them all here. <clears throat> of course, I've read first and second installment three times. The rest of them, I've read them once. And I'm going to be reading The Wastelands, book three here in the very near future. And when I complete that, I'm going to have Edward Lorne come back on and we're going to tear the Dark Tower series apart. It's going to be a spoiler-filled <clears throat> uh, conversation we're going to have about my favorite story of all time. You know, I wonder if they have any Dark Tower of these things, excuse me, because I'd like to collect those as well. I just, I don't know what it is about these things. I don't know if they're just cute or, or what they are, but I just, I'm like ready to empty my bank account and just buy a bunch of these things. All right, my friends, I am going to close it out here. Hold on a minute. I got another comment. I don't think you would ever, I don't think you would ever young adult fantasy, right? I mean, besides Harry Potter, that is act actually wrong. Let me grab another book here. Okay, so I don't see it, but there's a popular book called The Giver. Um, by who wrote the giver? Somebody tell me in the comments who wrote the giver. Uh, but I liked that book. I wasn't sure if I liked how it ended. In fact, I didn't. Uh, but I found out that there's actually four books included in that YA series. The second one's called blue something or the other. And I bought it. I have it here. I'm going to read them all and see, uh, if I can get a little more information as far as the giver, but I like YA books. I like just about anything. I like to read. Oh, you know what? I'm going to read Rebecca soon too. And I know that that's a romance and I want to read Gone with the Wind as well. So I'm open to why I also read the Hunger Games. I read the first book and the second book, really enjoyed them both, uh, the Hunger Games and Catching Fire. And, you know, I waited like three years or so uh, before I picked up Mockingjay. And when I started reading it, it had been so long since I read the other two that I like couldn't remember what was going on. I ended up putting it down. So I might actually go through all three of those books again and, and start it over and read them uh, in a relatively short period of time, uh, one to the next, so that I don't forget what happened. Uh, but yeah, I like YA books. You know, I don't care what it is, as long as it's got a good story in it. 
oh, you know what? If my books weren't scattered all over the place, uh, in my background, my friends, is going to be finally coming together. I've been moving things around here and and cleaning and everything. It's finally time for me to look into uh, putting some maps up there and getting some more books on. My background's going to look good here in the very near future. Uh, but I want to read A Wrinkle in Time, too. You know, I'm in for YA books. No problem with YA. Yeah, Kate Anderson, I feel you. I actually just started training jujitsu, and I, uh, I run between 7 and 14 miles every day. And I will tell you, that I feel like creaks and snaps and stuff that I didn't have when I was 21. I know I'm not old yet, but uh, I agree with you there. Oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. got to go back up. I want to answer all these before I get off here. Appreciate all the comments, guys. I'm going to start coming on a live stream more often. I'm really enjoying this. Um, okay. Always curious to know about what you do for a living. Are you a librarian? I'm actually working as a personal trainer. I'm working as a laborer uh, for a shop downtown. <clears throat> I found a gig where I, I'm doing some stuff in my home here where I'm bringing materials home and assembling them and, and they're paying me for that, uh, which is pretty interesting. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, that's what I've got going on. I'm laboring and I'm really trying to get my personal trainer thing uh, to take off because what I would really like to do for a living is just what I would be doing if I were a millionaire. And one of those things is running and, and exercising and rolling jujitsu. So I'm just now getting that off the ground. Uh, and I'm fairly poor here. I'm, I'm sustaining myself, but I want to grow with that because I would be doing that, uh, Anyhow, right? And, and I don't want to keep on labor, and though I will have to do that for now. Uh, but I really would like to somehow make a living or at least contribute to my living with uh, my literary stuff. Uh, I've started it with this channel. I'd really like to get this channel to blow up, my friends. So don't forget to share it. Uh, that would be cool if I could make a couple bucks off YouTube as well. Uh, but I actually have an interesting story. Maybe sometime I'll, I'll come on and talk about it with you guys where. I lived a life that was not good for a long time, and I've only been recovered from that for a few years now, so I'm kind of in my infancy here, trying to figure out what I want to do, uh, but I would love to make a living somehow with literature, uh, and I even thought about trying to write my own book, but I, I've i tried it, my friends, and I struggle even writing a short story, so perhaps I just don't have the imagination for that. But yeah, I'm not a librarian. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me that. And maybe I should apply at the library. Uh, uh, because I was doing book reviews in the library at one point. If you check out my past book reviews, you'll see for quite a few of them I was in the library. Because uh, I'm friends with some of the librarians. Uh, but no, a lot of people thought I was a librarian because of that. But no, I'm not a librarian. Okay, let me keep going through these comments here. I don't think you would ever, yeah, yeah, I would read YA. I'm in for YA. They have, but from the 2017 movie, Juan Martinez. Oh, Lord, the Dark Tower movie. That was horrible. I, I agree with you there. I actually thought that it wasn't horrible, just taken on its own. But as, as it was, the plot was changed, it was just horrible in that way. You see, a lot of times when, they make a movie of a book. What they'll do is they'll they'll basically stick to the script and they'll take some things out. They'll add some things. But the story's basically the same, right? Not in the case of The Dark Tower. They actually change the plot itself. The Dark Tower is something else in the movie than it was in the book. Uh, Roland's objective is something else in the movie than it was in the book. So that was just really unfortunate for us tower junkies. Do you have a Twitter account associated with this channel? Rita C. At Reading Funk. You can check me out on Instagram, Reading Funk. Twitter, at Reading Funk. Goodreads, Reading Funk. And you can check me out on Facebook. If you look up Reading Funk, I'm thinking about changing the name of that, but uh, you can look in the description for any one of my videos, and I'll put it in the description for this one that will take you to uh, my Facebook uh, page that I have where we just talk about reading. Which Stephen King book do you feel is the most underrated? I think Duma Key deserves more love, and I'm absolutely in for that. I would say probably either Duma Key or Under the Dome. Uh, Duma Key was just a fantastic book with Edgar Freemantle. 
you know, I want to do a reread on that because Duma Key, here's another recommendation, my friends. Duma Key by Stephen King. Duma Key, this horror novel is absolutely fantastic. And I don't know why it's not more recognized. Uh, because it's just one, ooh, almost dropped my books there. It's it's one of Stephen King's best. If you're thinking about getting into Stephen King, uh, I usually recommend Duma Key for just anyone. If you want a horror novel uh, and, and you're not sure about Stephen King, start with Duma Key. That's a good idea, self-published books. Unknown authors need the publicity. I feel bad I have a friend who is an author and he hasn't sold that many books. Yeah, you know, I know that there are a lot of authors out there that are, are they love reading, they're big time readers, and they love to write, uh, but they don't get any recognition because it's hard to pick, it's hard to get a, a big time publisher to pick you up. So people end up putting many hours into writing their own books and they put a lot of thought into it and they write pretty decent books in a lot of cases that very few people end up reading because they just don't have the power to get it out there and advertise it. So I'm thinking about helping a couple of self-published authors here since I have a bit of a platform. Uh, but yeah, and I myself, I'm just curious about these self-published uh, books. Hold on a second here, guys. Let me grab one more thing. Oh, actually, I see it right here. This is from a self-published author. It's called The Religion by Victor Wolf. And he sent it to me in the mail. I'm going to read and review it here on my channel. And I'm also going to bring him in for an interview here on my channel. And we're going to talk about the self-published world. Uh, because I know I'm not the only one that's interested in this thing. There, Juan Martinez. There's a guy called Jamie something something. He's from the Horror Show YouTube channel. He does an incredible Stephen King cover. I'd love to see you and him in a conversation on your channel. Well, I'm glad you mentioned it because sometimes I don't know who to reach out to because I get shot down a lot of times when I reach out to people. My channel's not all that big. I've got a loyal following and I really appreciate you guys. If you don't know, I really appreciate uh, my subscribership here. I'm really working hard thinking about what I can do to improve the quality of my channel and so on and so forth. But I will absolutely reach out to him and see if he'll come on and talk horror because one thing that I want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is read more horror. I've read Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I read a bunch of Stephen King. I've read some Dean Koontz, but like, my horizons aren't very broad with horror. So I need some good horror recommendations too. Drop those in the comments for me if you read some good ones. I want to read more fantasy. I want to read more sci-fi. I want to read more horror. Cover it all here on my channel. I want to read more classics. So I will definitely reach out to him. And if he'll, he's willing to come on, we'll do it. Wolfstar, Duma Key is in your top 10. It's probably in my top 10 as well. It might be more toward like my top three. I like Duma Key so much. Just got my first tattoo a month ago. Loving it and want more. I know you have a Dark Tower one. What else do I have? Uh, well, here's my Dark Tower tattoo. You can see this eye here. This is the eye of the Crimson King. It's really hard to point at yourself in a mirror image. But uh, uh, this is the eye of the king. And I have uh, this. I have the Cleveland Indians mascot, which I was big on when I was a kid. I have a space alien. I have the Cowboys from Hell, which is a symbol from the band Pantera. And I have this tattoo on the back of my hand here. Uh, so there you go. I've got a couple other ones as well. I have uh, Metallica. Uh, actually, I have the Metallica M right there on my wrist. Kind of maybe high, kind of hard to see it there. Uh, and I've got Metallica on my back. So there you go. And I want I actually want to get a stack of books tattooed on myself. Um, you know, I've got an all red and black sleeve going here. So I'm thinking like maybe just a stack of books here uh, with maybe a teacup or something sitting on top. I'm not entirely sure, but I want a literary tattoo that is a stack of books. All right, let's see what else we got here. Do I like John Grisham? I'll tell you what, can't believe I'm going on for an hour here. I'm going to start coming on live more often. This is a lot of fun. 
John Grisham is a fantastic author. I've read several of his books that I really enjoyed. And I don't think I've read any that I just didn't like. Check out his A Painted House. If you want to read one of his that's a non-legal thriller, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a Southern drama. But I think the first book that I ever read that was an adult novel was either um, A Time to Kill by John Grisham or it was Desperation by Stephen King. I read both of those as a teenager and A Time to Kill is like the standard by which other legal thrillers are now judged for me because it was so good. But yeah, I liked his Rogue Lawyer. I read The Firm. Uh, I read The Summons, I think. Uh, I really like him. And I like the fact that his books aren't like a formula kind of thing where they're all kind of similar. They're different, and I just think that they're good. One that I didn't care for was The Street Lawyer. But yeah, I like John Grisham. I'm about due for a John Grisham, as a matter of fact. The Giver, I haven't read it. I saw the movie, of course, Hunger Games movies. I like your bookshelves. Well, thank you. I, I put these bookshelves together. I had to buy the boards, and I stained them, and I lacquered them, and I bought those bricks, <clears throat> and I piled them all up. And uh, really, uh, <laughs> that was kind of frustrating. You probably would have laughed if you saw me doing it. I was getting frustrated, but I got it all together. It looks better than I thought it would. It's actually, there's more to it there than, than what you can see. Uh, when you see me on here, I'm actually thinking about doing a tutorial about how to build a bookshelf like this because I have some smaller pieces of wood and I have the stain and I have the lacquer. Uh, and, and I'm thinking about doing a, uh, an instructional on how to do a smaller version of what I've got going on here. All righty, let's keep going. I want a bedroom like yours someday. This actually isn't my bedroom. This is my library room. Whoops. Keep doing what you do. Thanks for the support. Do McKee and Bag of Bones are top tier for me. Stephen King wrote a, a novel called Bag of Bones. It was a ghost story. I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't the biggest fan of that one. You know, something that's really strange is that sometimes I'll read a book and I think, well, maybe it wasn't all that great. But I think if Maybe I went back and reread it as years have passed by. I would like it more. I'm thinking about giving Bag of Bones another shot. I, I do own it. I'm working on buying all the Stephen King books. Uh, I want to collect them all and read them all. Kate Anderson, I struggled with addiction for years. I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Books are a great way to occupy yourself. Yeah, that is true. I was an addict. I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I was a heroin addict. And I smoked cigarettes and I drank and I took a lot of pills and it was just a nightmare for more than 20 years. It was a nightmare. And I've been to uh, the state penitentiary five times in the state of Ohio, read a lot of books when I was in there. <clears throat> that was about the only good uh, that came of that. But three years ago, I finally had had enough. I was, I was ready to kill myself. I was really ready. I was actually thinking about what would be the least painful way to kill myself. I was so distressed and, uh, I got some help and I completely stopped. I stopped smoking cigarettes. Now I'm, I run between seven and 15 miles every day. I roll jujitsu. I'm helping other people to stop using drugs. I'm reading. I'm actually working and supporting myself now. So you know, I've, I've, I've come a ways, but I've got a long way to go. But yeah, that's what I'm referring to about was the drug addiction primarily. While you do a lot, you have three jobs. You do this person or trainer labor. I would absolutely love to do YouTube full time. Uh, of course, I would still go out and run and I still want to work with people doing that. Uh, but I would like to do YouTube full time. You guys can help me with that by sharing this and encouraging people to subscribe. <clears throat> I know that a lot of people um, do make a lot of money doing this. Now, of course, I've started this just for the joy of doing it. I remember almost three years ago now, I read a book, put the review up, you know, because I would just do it for the joy of doing it. I haven't even bothered monetizing my channel and I could have a year ago. Uh, <clears throat> but if it were to like become significantly bigger, I probably would monetize it. Uh, but yeah, I would absolutely love to talk about reading books full time and get paid for it. <laughs> That'd be a dream come true. I love the Dark Tower movie, but didn't read the book, so I understand why it didn't do well. Uh, 
what's wrong with the Dark Tower movie is it's based on an epic fantasy series that's primarily seven books with dozens of other books that play into the plot. And they changed it. They changed the plot. It's just a completely different story, just vaguely based on the series. So that was a real problem for a lot of us. It's, it is not, it's not a condensed version of the story. It's a different story. How about starting your own web page? You know, I've thought about that, Joe Keith. Uh, and maybe I will. I, I'm not exactly sure what I would put there. Maybe I just need to investigate that some more. Wolfstar, I'm actually currently writing a drama, thriller, short story collection. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm considering publishing, but who knows? I'm actually writing a short story, and, and I can't tell you exactly what it's about. I'd have to kill you if I did that. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding, but um, I have like an idea for a good short story. It's kind of based on flowers for Algernon, or, or I got... Maybe I got the idea from that. It's kind of like that, but it's like totally different. But like, I'm not a writer, so I'm not sure if I want to dump a lot of time into that that I might regret or if I just want to keep reading books. I'm not sure. I should finish my short story and maybe I could actually come on and do an audiobook narration of it and see what you guys think of it. Robert R. McCammon for other horror reads. He's sensational. You know, I couldn't tell you how many times I've heard that. Um, I, people keep recommending his books, so I have to do that. You know, House of Leaves, Caustic, Caustric. House of Leaves is a good horror story. I didn't even realize it was a horror story. I actually picked it up from the library back when the library used to be open before COVID-19. And it was really interesting the, the way the pages were laid out, the different colors of type. And, and it was just really unusual, the format and... I want to go back and read that. I didn't get a chance to get into it because it was one of those situations where I borrowed too many books from the library where I couldn't read them all. And I ended up taking it back without reading it. But uh, you're making me reconsider. I do want to read that soon. Thank you for the compliment on the tattoo, Juan Martinez. Lawn Boy, I have just recently got into reading and I am glad I found your channel. Have been enjoying your reviews and have added many of them to my list. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, my friend. Uh, keep going because <clears throat> if you're just getting into reading, you're going to come across some books that mean something to you. You know, I'm actually going to be doing a, a, a video here probably this upcoming week about why do you read? I've realized that people read for a variety of different reasons. It's not as simple as well, we read because we like a good story. People read for escapism. They read to learn things. They read because some people like me are fairly lonely people and you have a relationship with the author, kind of like. The book The book characters and the book itself can become a friend to you almost if, uh, if it's a good one. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of reasons to read and I highly encourage you, Lawn Boy, to just keep on going. You'll get some bad ones, you'll get some good ones. And every once in a while, if you're persistent, you'll get a great one. Wolfstar, The Terror by Dan, Dan Simmons is one of the best horror novels ever, in my opinion. I actually did not like that book. I uh, started it, and I thought it was a good idea, but I felt that it was too long. And like they were on the ship, and they were drinking, and I was like, when's something going to happen? When's something going to happen? I ended up giving up on it. But uh, you know, maybe that's another example of, of I could go back maybe in the future and try that one again. I was actually leading a group read through the tear and I gave up on it. So I just wasn't really into that one. Reading The Guardian. Is that by, uh, that's by John Grisham, I think. Joe Keith, thanks for the compliment. Uh, I'd love to see that tutorial. I'm currently planning on changing my shelf as well. You know why? You know why I built this bookshelf back there? Is because... I was thinking about just buying a nice bookshelf that would cover, be a nice background for my YouTube channel. And I realized I was looking at like thousands of dollars for a huge bookshelf. Plus I've got it where they come together in the, in the corner over here. I would have to have two bookshelves that were like kind of identically made that would butt together. No way I could afford to do it. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to buy some pine planks and some cheap old stain and some bricks and just do it myself. And it did cost me a little bit, but nowhere near what it would have costed to buy, uh, what it would have cost me to, to, uh, 
to buy like a really nice bookshelf. That would have probably cost me thousands. All right. Would you do a book tour and go to your favorite bookstores in your town? You know, I'm glad you asked that because I was just thinking yesterday because there's a there's a paper book, uh, the paperback mark, the used paper bookstore right on the corner by where I lived. And I thought, you know, I could take my phone with me and record my journey through the paperback mart. And I thought, well, maybe my viewers wouldn't want to see that. Me going through a bookstore with my phone, would it work out? Would it not work out? Maybe I should do that. Maybe I absolutely should do that. All right, here we go. Joe Keith, thanks again for the encouragement. Yeah, I could. I could go down to uh, that paperback mart. If that's what you want to see, I'll do it. You know, I really like the paperback mart because I can go there with $5 and have a heyday because a lot of them are just $1. Some of them are actually... You tower junkies will really appreciate this. I got a book called The Man in Black by Al Conroy. It's a Western, pretty thin... Western. I don't even know if this thing's a hundred pages. Yeah, it's over a hundred pages. It was 40 cents when it came out, but it was 19 cents at the paperback mart. And you tower junkies will know how significant that is. And I don't know why it's like that, my friends. I tried to figure it out, but it might be a coincidence. It might not. It seems almost impossible that it is, but at that paperback mart, there are $1 paperbacks, $2 paperbacks. I don't think any of them are more than $4. So I can go down there with some change and make a video. Uh, so yeah, I'll do that. I would absolutely love to do that. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for the compliments, everyone. I, I would like to start going live on a regular basis. You know, first the first thing I have to do, and perhaps you can help me in the comments, is uh, let me know what you would like to actually see me talk about live. Because I could just come on and talk about books at random, but that might start to get old pretty fast. So. Maybe I could start a weekend show where every Saturday and Sunday I'm live in the mornings or the afternoons or whatever, uh, or whatever. I don't know. I'm just thinking about this now. So let me know if what you think I could do for a live show. Cause I would do a live show if I could, if I could come up with enough material to actually do it. Yeah, I'd definitely do it. Yeah. Joe Keith, I love thrillers as well. Perhaps that is my favorite genre is a good thriller novel. I like Dan Brown. I like the Robert Langdons. Uh, you know, Vince Flynn was a very good writer. He passed away <clears throat> and he wrote political thrillers and he may have been the absolute best at those. I like a plot that's just really fast. Excuse me. And I like even when that, when that, when the, uh, the authors utilize the short chapter approach and keep throwing cliffhangers in there. I like, really love those political thrillers and any kind of thriller novel. I just absolutely love them. Check out Vince Flynn. If you haven't read him all uh, already, I recommend his Memorial Day. And I think there's one called Executive Orders that I read. Both of those are very good. Go for Hell by Grady Hendrix is a very worthwhile read. I will look that up, Dave Edmonds. Uh, the long hair was cool. You know, I had really long hair for a really long time. Uh, and I ended up not brushing it for a little while. I just got tired of the maintenance. I said, well, I'm not going to brush it as, as much as I was. And it just got all messed up. And it was so messed up that I ended up actually just taking a razor and zip, zip, cut it all off. Maybe you could talk more about your favorite short stories in the future, like a top 15 list or something. You know, that's a good idea. And I need to expand my short stories beyond Stephen King. Let me grab one more book off my shelf before I wrap this up. Uh, you know what I think I might do might be a hit would be my top 10 Stephen King short stories uh, because I've read a lot of those. Um, but here I have a book called Fantasy and Horror, The Year's Best. I like these Year's Best compilations. And it's just a bunch of short stories. I'm going to actually lead a group read. If you're looking for people uh, online to read with, join my Facebook group. I'll, I'll leave the uh, link in the description. It's called Avid Readers Roundtable Discussion Group on Facebook. And you can come in there and we talk about books and we do group reads, some of which 
we open up a group chat and we just chat while we're reading in a spoiler-free man manner until we all finish. And I'm also setting up now actual virtual book groups where uh, we all meet and, and we take turns selecting the book we want to read and then we go our separate ways and then on the proper day and time we come back in. Uh, I can get like 10 people into a room and we're doing virtual book group. So if you're if you're interested in anything like that, uh, join me at Avid Readers Round Table Discussion Group on Facebook. The top 10 Stephen King something are always a hit. That is absolutely true. You know, I loved his short story, The Man in the Black Suit. Uh, I loved his short story, N. And he just has so many. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to grab another book off my shelf here. Give me just a second. I have to read this thing. This is a massive novel of short stories because uh, I have actually read, I've read The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. I've read Everything's Eventual. I've read Hearts in Atlantis. I've read Just After Sunset by Stephen King. These are all short story compilations. I have to read different seasons. I have to read the book I just, show, uh, just showed, uh, nightmares and dreamscapes. And at that point I might have most of the Stephen King short stories read. So <clears throat> I need to do a top 10 on that, uh, for sure. Uh, Joe Keith, how about a zoom group? I actually use Streamyard, uh, which is interesting because you don't have to have it on your computer. All you have to do is just select the link that I send you and it brings you right into the room. Uh, but it, it, if you come into avid readers Roundtable discussion group on Facebook, uh, I'm always trying to recruit people for a virtual book group and almost no one wants to do it. And some of the people that say they'll do it, they get in and then they don't show up because a lot of times people just don't want to get on camera. They're not comfortable with it or whatever. Uh, but I'm looking for some people that will actually meet up and show up and read the book for a monthly. I'm doing uh, monthly and bi-monthly uh, book groups uh, for a virtual room for fiction and nonfiction, my friend. So if you have any interest in that, hit me up uh, in Avid Readers, uh, and, I, and I'll get you right in, no problem. We're actually reading The Alienist right now, um, and we have like over a month before we're going to meet because it's one of the bi-monthly novel reading groups. So if you want to get in on The Alienist, uh, come into Avid Readers, uh, send me a message, and uh, I'll just pop you right in, no problem. You're missing Skeleton Crew, one of his best. Yeah, I do have Skeleton Crew. Matter of fact, now that you mention it, I read Skeleton Crew last year, and N is in this compilation. Boy, I've got a beat-up copy of this. It's got tape on it and everything. Uh, but yeah, I read Skeleton Crew. It wasn't my favorite. Hearts in Atlantis is my favorite, even though that was a couple novellas and maybe four short stories. I liked Everything's Eventual a lot. Yeah, The Mist, uh, The Monkey, Kane Rose Up, Mrs. Todd Shortcut. Uh, maybe N isn't in this one. I can't remember which one I read N in, uh, but I know that I did read it. It was, it was just such a, such a really unique and just really well thought out short story. It was just like brilliant. I can't even think of the word I'm trying to get at to describe it, but, uh, it was good. I have not read the, the Cormoran strike series. I have not read that one. You guys will laugh. Uh, let me show you my most recent book haul. You guys will might laugh, but uh, yeah, and it's in Just After Sunset. I actually have two copies of that. I went, uh, where did I go? I got these at the Goodwill. It was in a big bin of books. Challenge at second base. When I was a kid, <clears throat> I used to play baseball, and I absolutely loved these uh, sports uh, novels by Matthew Christopher. Couldn't get enough of those. <clears throat> I got this basically because I think it'll look good in my background. Horton hatches the egg, but I'm going to read it and, and add it to my Goodreads uh, challenge for the year. Dr. Seuss, I got to get the rest of that sticker off there. You can see back there, I actually have... I think that's the cat in the hat in Spanish.
No, it's not the cat in the hat. Uh, I don't know what El Lora. I'm sure I said that wrong, but that's that. Uh, and I also got, as part of my book haul, the Berenstein Bears. Learn about strangers. And the Berenstein Bears forget their manners. You know, I really liked these books when I was a kid um, because I remember we would like sit around when I was in elementary school and we, the teacher would read a Berenstain Bear book. And I really liked those. They were quite interesting. So I had to buy those when I saw them in that book bin. How about a different author and genre every month? That's not a bad idea. That's the Lorax. Okay. That's what that is. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, my friends. I want to eat. I've got some reading to do. I'm reading a history book, and I'm reading The Alienist. And just to reiterate, if you are interested in joining an online book group uh, where you can – we do it two ways, my friend. You can come to Avid Readers Roundtable Discussion Group just to join the group, even if you don't want to join a group read. Uh, but I'm always trying to get people to join uh, in the group reads. I do two different styles of that. I will have one where we just meet in a group uh, chat box and we just type. We just type. We don't meet by video. <clears throat> and we do a lot of those. And that's fun. Uh, but I recently have implemented this uh, virtual uh, reading group where all you need is a computer with a camera or a tablet with a camera or just your phone with the, with the camera on it. That's all you have to have. You don't have to have an app or anything else. It's very simple. I do it all myself on my computer. I'll send you a link out uh, to your email or your messenger or whatever. You click on that, you come into the room, and we just all converse about the book that we read for the month. And we take turns uh, selecting the book that we're going to read. So everyone has a chance to influence what we read. And you don't have to read the book uh, if you're just not into it. But I, I do like encourage people to read it at least half the time to stay in the group. So there you go, my friends. If you want some reading companions, come on into Avid Readers Roundtable Discussion Group. Uh, Joe Keith, thank you. I've enjoyed it as well. I'm going to start coming on here more often on the live stream side. I guess I just didn't realize how much I would enjoy it. So let me know in the comments if you have ideas for me uh, for live streams or books to read or anything that I can do to improve my content, uh, to make my channel more successful. And I really... Uh, appreciate all the support, guys. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off.